Hello fashion fans and welcome to the first ever and hopefully the only time this will ever have to be exclusively virtually Fashion Institute of Technology's Great Fashion Quiz. I'm Derek Blasberg, I'm the head of fashion and beauty at YouTube and I am thrilled to be your host tonight for what will be the ultimate evening of virtual trivia where we'll test your knowledge on pop culture, iconic fashion moments, the LGBTQ plus movement, and the importance of voting and using your voice. Who else can you expect to see here tonight? We've got Hari Neff, Tan France, Deborah Messing, Alton Mason, Veronica Webb, and so many more. But first, to kick things off, I'd like to introduce the president of FIT, Dr. Joyce Brown. Good evening. Thank you for joining us for the great fashion trivia night. I'm Joyce Brown and I'm the president of FIT. And we are so excited to hold this event to raise critical funds for both the FIT Foundation and the Human Rights Campaign, and to raise awareness around diversity, equity, and inclusion initiatives that support the LGBTQIA community and civil rights. The urgency of this moment really requires that we act quickly, but also that we do everything in our power to affect lasting social change. As both a community and a country, we are living through a pivotal moment in history. The ground has really shifted and boundaries are being challenged, challenged to dismantle those structures that have protected and sustained systemic racism throughout our society. Much of what needs to be done really includes changing the hearts, the minds, and the behavior of many people in America. And now more than ever, we need to make sure that every voice in our community is heard, especially in the 2020 elections. So at FIT, we have an obligation to ensure that every member of our community is registered to vote. The very most empowering thing that we can do is vote. By your vote or the lack thereof, you give power to the locally elected officials to recruit, to train and promote members of law enforcement and to institute specific programs in your community. By your vote or lack thereof, the leadership in Washington from the White House to the halls of Congress will be determined. So soon we will mount a major voter registration campaign at FIT so that every voice in our community will be heard in the 2020 elections. Individually, we can mobilize for action. We can support change makers that we endorse. We can demand new legislation that ensures we will never ever witness the atrocities of 2020 again. So I thank you for being here, and I hope you enjoy this special evening. Hi, okay, I'm back. Now we're gonna go through the rules of tonight's game. As a reminder, you'll now want to get a second device, like a cell phone, for playing the game or open another browser window to the URL at the bottom of the screen. So I really hope you can see a URL right now on the bottom of the screen. As we move through the game, we'll be joined by a special guest who will read each of these questions as well as the answer options you have to select. You'll want to follow along on the game app to submit your answers and see where you rank in the game. Once each of our special guests is finished reading their question and answer options, the clock will start ticking and you'll have to answer. We'll be selecting the winners for tonight's prizes from those who rank at the top of the evening's leaderboard. So, did you get all that? Without further ado, allow me to introduce our first quiz questioner, the lovely, incredible Veronica Webb. All right, everyone, here's your great fashion trivia night question. Who was the first African-American model to receive an exclusive cosmetics contract? Was the answer A, moi, yours truly, Veronica Webb, B, the beautiful Beverly Johnson, C, the dynamic Tyra Banks, or D, the stunning Chanel Iman.
alumnus helped Gilbert Baker, the creator of the original Pride flag, sew the initial 1978 design. A. James McNamara B. Antonio Lopez C. Fabrice Simon or D. Calvin Klein Hello everyone. On behalf of the Human Rights Campaign, I want to thank you all for joining us for the Great Fashion Trivia Night. I especially want to thank the FIT Foundation and FIT President Dr. Joyce Brown for all of the critical work that you do day in and day out. Before we get started tonight, I want to briefly describe the work of the Human Rights Campaign and what you can do to help us move equality forward for all LGBTQ people. As the nation's largest lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, and queer civil rights organization, the Human Rights Campaign has more than 3 million members and supporters in every corner of this country. And we have been fighting for equality for more than 40 years. In schools, hospitals, workplaces, and communities throughout this nation and around the world, the work of the Human Rights Campaign Foundation has played a key role in securing protections that otherwise would not exist. Our groundbreaking programs enable us to advance equality and inclusion and support LGBTQ people in meaningful ways in their daily lives. We build support for LGBTQ people among family and friends, co-workers and employers, religious leaders and parishioners, doctors and patients, and many, many other arenas. Through these programs, we are enhancing the lived experiences of LGBTQ people and their families as we change hearts and minds across the United States and around the globe. At this moment, the work could not be more important. We are at a crossroads in this country that will determine the future of our democracy. First, we face a global pandemic that has touched every single one of us. Second, our nation is finally in the midst of a great awakening when it comes to racial justice. And third, in just a few months, we face the most important election of our lives. Never before has it been more important for you to get involved. For us to achieve true liberation, it will require every single one of us to be engaged, to speak up against injustice, to have conversations with friends and family about the issues that are important to you. And most of all, it will require us to vote. To make change, we must exercise our constitutional right to vote. And as we ponder all of these important issues and the future of our nation, we're going to have some fun. We're going to test your knowledge of pop culture, iconic fashion moments, and the LGBTQ movement. And after tonight's event, I hope that we can count on you to join us in this work. I certainly cannot promise that it will be easy, but I can promise that it will be worth it. The dream of full equality that we are fighting for is not an elusive abstract principle, rather it's very real and tangible and can be fully realized if we work together. And I hope that you will join us, join this movement, and join the fight for equality. Have a great time tonight. There's still great work to be done and it's up to each one of us you and I are partners we are part of an ongoing struggle to redeem the soul of America to help people in this country and around the world come to grip with one simple truth that we are one people we are one family we are the human family I've said over and over again, when you see something that is not right, not fair, not just, get to stand up 
speak up and speak out and find a way to get in the way and to get in trouble, good trouble, necessary trouble. And I want all of us to be committed and dedicated to the point that we are going to fight the good fight. That you may get weary, you may fall down, but you must get up and continue to fight. I never gave up. You must not give up. Stay in the struggle. Never become bitter. Never become hostile. And never hate, for hate is too heavy a burden to bear. Love everybody the way of love. In his honor, we present this question. In 2013, Rep. John Lewis became the first member of Congress to publish this type of literature. A, graphic novel, B, book of poetry, C, play script, D, cookbook. Yo, my name is Alton Mason, and I have a question for you. Which of these designers did not attend FIT? Was it Michael Kors, Calvin Klein, Reem Akra, or Donna Karen? I'm Deborah Messing. The 19th Amendment gave women the right to vote. What year was the 19th Amendment ratified? A, 1917. B, 1920. C, 1922. D, 1927. And the correct answer is the 19th Amendment was ratified in the year 1920. Who got that one right? A well, hundred years ago this year. While we're on the topic of the right to vote, did you know that there are certain questions you can ask that statistically increase the likelihood that someone will actually show up on election day? For example, instead of asking, are you gonna vote? Ask, what time were you planning on voting? Before work or after? Or where's your local polling station? The trick is to ask questions that push people into visualizing themselves taking action on election day, increasing the chances that they actually see it through. 
One very important step in making sure your voice is heard on election day is making sure you're registered to vote. That's, that's very true, very true. You have just over 100 days to get ready to vote in this election and visit hrc.org slash vote to check your voter registration status, register to vote, and request an absentee or mail-in ballot. There's also an app there for you to check out. You can really get down with your voting options. Now that we've made sure you can all make your voices heard on November 3rd and in your local elections, let's get back to the game. Next up, please join me in welcoming Vanessa Williams to give our next questions for the night. Hi, it's Vanessa Williams. I wanna thank HRC and FIT for their amazing work all around voting. Uh, actually, I am a FIT mom. My oldest daughter went to FIT back in the day. So uh, proud to be here and proud to be part of a ongoing freedom that we have, which is the right to vote. Now, I have some trivia questions um, for tonight. And the first trivia question is, how many voters in this year's Super Tuesday presidential primaries identify as LGBTQ? A, 1%, B, 5%, C, 10%, D, for being the first hijab wearing high fashion model. Just this week, the 2020 Sports Illustrated swimsuit issue was released and not only will you see me in there for a second season wearing a modest swimsuit known as a burkini, but you will also see the first ever transgender model to appear in the iconic magazine. What is her name? A. Valentina Sampaio B. Angela Posse, C, Andrea Pejik, or D, Inez Rao. Hi, I'm Fern Malice, and I have a question for you. In what year did 7th on 6th, now called New York Fashion Week, first present organized runway shows in tents in Bryant Park? Was it A, 1943, B, 1963, C, 1983, or D, 1993? The correct answer is 1993. While the first Fashion Week happened in 1943 during the Second World War, it wasn't until 50 years later that New York Fashion Week got a dedicated space to hold its shows. The tents at Bryant Park premiered that year. Before then, shows were held in clubs and Soho Lofts. There you go. 
Right, we are so grateful to all of you for joining this evening. We hope you're having fun. Please tell me you're having fun. Not only are you here to have a good time, you're also supporting two fantastic organizations, the FIT Foundation and the Human Rights Campaign Foundation. As we're talking about and celebrating important moments in the LGBTQ plus movement, milestones for diversity in fashion, and the importance of voting and using your voice, we hope you'll consider making a donation to support the work of these two incredible organizations. You can show your support by clicking the donate button that you see on the screen now. I hope there's a button to donate somewhere here and make a contribution to the pop-up donation form. Now let's get back to the game. Our next quizzer is my friend, the incredibly lovely Hari Neff. Which is the only state that does not require citizens to register to vote? A, North Dakota, B, Montana, C, Wyoming, D, Maine. Next question. How many countries around the world currently have marriage equality? A, 18, B, 29, C, 35, D, 37. everyone i'm james turlington until 1943 the legal voting age in the united states was 21. in what year did the legal voting age drop to 18 officially according to the constitution 1947 1960 1965 or 1971 Again, the correct answer is 1971. Georgia became the first state to lower the legal voting age to 18 years old in 1943. But in 1971, with the ratification of the 26th Amendment, all states were required to set a voting age that was no higher than 18. Right. How's everyone doing out there? Have you checked in to see where you stand in our leaderboard? We'd be remiss not to thank our amazing sponsors who helped make this evening possible. So give me a minute to say thank you to the guys who are making the checks happen. to the quiz. Our next quizzer is Jeffrey Banks. Hi, I'm Jeffrey Banks, and I'm going to give you your next fashion trivia question. Who was the first fashion critic to receive a Pulitzer Prize? 
Was it A, Vanessa Friedman? Was it B, Susie Menkes? Was it C, Robin Javon? Or was it D, Kathy Horn? So, where did I meet Ernesto Gonzalez, Cuban sculptor, my first mentor, early 50s, who was responsible for promoting direct welded sculpture? Here are the choices. Long Island, Provincetown, Massachusetts, New York, New York, or San Francisco, California. school in New York City did my character Grace Adler attend? A. Parsons. B. Academy of Art. C. FIT. D. Pratt. Discussing the importance of voting and using your voice tonight, we encourage you to educate yourself as a voter, do research in your own state, and be willing to have conversations with your friends and neighbors. Be prepared with information on voter registration deadlines, absentee ballots, and be able to direct your friends and neighbors to the resources they need in order to make sure that they're registered to vote. Show up for your neighbors. It's good for community and good for democracy. Thank you for that incredible message, Jacob. Um, it's an honor to have you and so many other people. All right, everyone, the time has come for our final question of the evening. Here's your last chance to put yourself on the top of our leaderboard and earn a chance in Glucky Raffle winners. Joining us for our final question of the evening is... Tan France. Hello everyone, my name is Tan France. Thank you HRC and FIT for having me and for the wonderful work that you are doing as a former fashion designer and former fashion college student. I love that you've joined forces on such a great, great cause. Before I get into the questions that I'm gonna ask you, I would like to ask one very important question, which is that you please get out and vote. And will you be voting? I hope the answer is yes, heck yes. Now with the questions. In what year did the uprising at Stonewall Inn take place? 
A, 1967, B, 1968, C, 1969, D, 1970. That's it, guys. That's our program for the night. That's the quiz. That's the online virtual experience Fantasia. I'd like to take a minute to thank everyone who played. Thank you for coming tonight. Thank you to our sponsors. I'd like to do a special shout out to the FIT Foundation, the Human Rights Campaign. Look, this is not what we thought we'd be doing to celebrate this evening. Um, we also know that 2020 has been a tough year uh, we hope that this quiz has been a bright spot in dark times. We're all hoping, praying, thinking, and wishing we come out stronger, better, and more compassionate. Um, so I guess thanks for joining us, and don't forget to vote! Mm -hmm.